اهلا بيكم ماي توك توداي ويل بي اباوت ذا رول اوف سي بي ان دايجنوزس اوف كولايتس اي ويل ستارت ويز ذا ديمونستريتنج اوف ديفرنت كوزز اوف كولايتس كولايتس كود بي ديو تو ايذر انفلاماتري باول ديزيز لايك كرونز ديزيز اور السر تيف كولايتس اور ديو تو انفكشس باول ديزيز لايك تي بي كولايتس اور امي بي كولايتس سايتومغالو فيروس كولايتس نيتروبينيك كولايتس سودومان بيرينس كولايتس or due to ischemic colitis. The radiological features in colitis in CT skin is thickening of the wall of the bowel. So how can we differentiate between all of these causes of colitis on CT skin, especially all of them are appreciated in the form of only thickening of the wall? The clue for the diagnosis is through number one, clinical information. Number two, distribution of the disease. Number three, CT, attenuation of the bowel wall. Starting with clinical information, the age of the patient is very important. As some types of colitis are restricted for a specific age group, like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, affecting only the young age group, around 20s. And ischemic colitis is usually affecting the old people. Number two is distribution of the disease starting with inflammatory bowel disease which have very specific distribution as in Crohn's disease 85 percent involving the terminal area 14 percent involving the colon alone and one percent involving the small bowel alone from the 85 percent which involving the terminal area 50 percent involving the colon in addition to the terminal area and 35 percent involving the small bowel in addition to the terminal area. In ulcerative colitis, it begins in the rectum and extends proximally. I mean, you have to exclude ulcerative colitis from any colitis sparing the rectum. Regarding the distribution of ischemic colitis, you know that the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein are supplying and draining the small bowel and right side of the colon, while inferior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric vein are supplying and draining the left side of the colon, as you see in these two images. So the distribution of ischemic colitis is usually respecting the vascular distribution, as you see in this case. Here, you notice that there is marked thickening of the hepatic flexure and right colon with abrupt transition between the abnormal and the normal wall in the transverse colon. This is a typical case for ischemic colitis due to respecting the vascular distribution as you see here. Regarding the distribution of infectious colitis, amoebiasis affecting the right colon, TB affecting the terminal ileum and cecum, shigella affecting the rectus sigmoid, cytomegalovirus localized distribution in cecum and the terminal ileum, teflitis or neutropenic colitis, affecting the terminal ileum, ascending colon, and or appendix. The pseudomembrinous colitis affecting the left side of the colon or affecting involving all the colon in the form of an colitis. The last thing which is the CT attenuation of the bowel wall. There are five categories. White attenuation, gray attenuation, water attenuation, fat attenuation, and black attenuation. Starting with white attenuation, it means enhancement of the wall of the bowel to the same degree like the adjacent venous structure. Usually seen in cases of inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, as well as in cases of shock bowel syndrome. The first case, this is a case of Crohn's disease. Here there is marked enhancement of the wall of the small bowel with the same enhancement like the adjacent external iliac vein, as you see. The second case is a case of ulcerative colitis. Here, the thickening and the enhancement of the wall of the rectus sigmoid to the same attenuation like the external iliac vein. Another example for white attenuation in a case of shock bowel syndrome, as you see. There is enhancement of the small intestine demonstrate increased enhancement, which is greater than that of the inferior vena cava, as you see. The second category is gray attenuation. We finish white attenuation. 
The second category is gray attenuation. Gray attenuation is defined as thickened bowel wall that shows little enhancement similar to the adjacent muscle. This pattern is usually used to differentiate between benign and malignant disease, I mean mainly between diverticulitis and neoplastic lesions. Bowel wall thickening of less than 2 cm was more characteristic of benign conditions, whereas thickening greater than 3 cm was usually present in neoplastic cases. This is a case of diverticulitis. As you see, there is multiple diverticula in the sigmoid column associated with marked thickening of the wall with a degree of enhancement similar to the adjacent muscle, as you see. Another example of gray attenuation in case of sigmoidal carcinoma. Here you see an annular mass lesion involving the sigmoid, causing shouldering of the wall. Notice the pattern of enhancement is similar to the adjacent muscle. The third category is water attenuation. Here, as you see in this image, there is fluid attenuation of the submucosa, with enhancement of the mucosa and the serosa, giving the appearance of water halo sign or target sign, as you see. The differential diagnosis in such cases of water attenuation is wide, and they can include all the types of colitis. However, the inflammatory bowel disease and the ischemic bowel disease are on top of the list. The fourth category is fat attenuation. Here there is fat replacement seen in the submucosa. Here we have limited differential diagnosis, which is either chronic ulcerative colitis or chronic Crohn's disease. As you see, this is a case of chronic Crohn's disease. There is fat replacement seen here in the region of the terminal ileum. Another example of chronic ulcerative colitis, as you see, there is fat replacement here in the submucosa in a case of chronic ulcerative colitis involving the rectum, as you see. The last category is black attenuation. Black attenuation refers to presence of intramural gas, as you see in this image. Usually it means ischemic bowel disease, especially if uh, it's associated with gas in the portal tracts. Let us now summarize our talk. Colitis can be diagnosed by clinical information, especially the age of the patient. Number two, distribution of the disease as some types of colitis have a very specific distribution. The last thing is wall attenuation, which is classified into five categories, white, gray, water, fat, and black attenuation. So this is everything regarding the diagnosis of colitis by CT scan. Thank you very much.